Friends, we need to talk about Doom. Oh, no, no, not the video game. Or the uh, video game movie. Although, once upon a time, I was the captain of a Star Trek meetup group, and we used to have these movie nights where we'd play What Else Were They In?, uh, which is the game where you watch all the movies and TV shows of actors and actresses who have been in Star Trek. Uh, so you can find out a lot about a person's filmography. But it's how my friends discovered Tom Hardy. I myself discovered that Nichelle Nichols had been in a black exploitation movie called Chuck Turner. Uh, spoilers. She dies, uh, but she does play a madam. So that was fascinating. And then it turns out DeForest Kelly played bad guys in Westerns. He played a character who shot and killed Steve McQueen in an episode of The Lone Ranger. Bones killed Steve McQueen. <laughs> but anyway, the reason we watched Doom back then was because Carl Urban stars in it. And I mean... Maybe it was the Romulan ale I made that night, but I enjoyed it. You sly dog, you caught me monologuing about Star Trek again. No, no, no. This episode is about Doom, the Forbidden. So you may have heard, but my friend Raven and I are doing a podcast called The Apocalypse Book Club. We're reading all apocalyptic fiction in chronological order, and we have finally made it to the year 1906 and the book The Doomsman. It's pretty much what would happen if you mixed Escape from New York with a meeting of the Society for Creative Anachronism. There's this boy, his name is Constance. Uh, his entire family is murdered by the Doomsmen, led by the fabulously flamboyant Quinton Edge, best villain name ever. And Constance swears a blood oath to kill Quinton. Like you do. Along the way, he makes best friends with the Leader of the Doomsman's grandson, his name is Ulick. Uh, I don't know why. That's a terrible name. And, you know, other things happen, but uh, you can listen to the episode to get the full recap. Considering some of the truly terrible books we've already read. I'm looking at you, Valhalla. The Doomsman's not a bad book. I just have a lot of questions about the geography since it takes place in a post-apocalyptic New York City. Now, I did touch upon this during the podcast, but unfortunately, podcasts are an audio medium, and you know how I feel about maps. So consider this, my gentle viewer and listener, my very first video supplement to an episode of the Apocalypse Book Club. I think I'm going to need a bigger wall. Two buses later. I am now going to attempt to paint from memory the five boroughs of New York City. And Westchester. And I guess I gotta put Jersey in there too. I think I'm going to need more poster board. <laughs>
What color should Staten Island be? I'm gonna make it orange. You have no idea how much I'm regretting now that I didn't make Queens blue and orange for the Mets. I guess Staten Island will be the orange one. Go Mets. <laughs> Doom the Forbidden. I'm literally trying to remember how much landfill was in Lower Manhattan in 1906. I'm pretty sure it was this much, yeah. Okay. Manhattan is not this close to Staten Island. This is not to scale. So, just keep that in mind. Thanks. She's got curves, you know? She's got a... <laughs> I'm not, you know what? I'm gonna remove my comment about the Lower East Side. <laughs> I, d I just don't feel like washing the brush and doing this the proper way, so we're just gonna do finger painting with Nella. I'm making a whole new YouTube finger painting tube. Why should the makeup tutorials have all the fun? Now, William Gilbert von Tassel Sutphen was born in Philadelphia, but lived in Manhattan and worked at the Harper Brothers publishing nonsense. He knew just enough geography about the five boroughs to be dangerous. Based on descriptions in the book, one could suppose at first that the hero, Constance, actually lives up in the Bronx. As you continue reading more and more into the book, it becomes clear that what he was actually thinking of was probably Brooklyn, where trees grow. In this essay, I am going to point out why it makes more sense for Constant to have come from the Bronx instead of Brooklyn, and why Van Tassel should feel very bad. So it pretty much boils down to access to Yonkers. Now, St. Constance begins his journey here, after his family's stronghold is destroyed by the doomsmen, who live here, in Doom. The Forbidden. Boy's gonna need a boat because the book goes out of its way of pointing out that all the bridges and tunnels surrounding Manhattan have been destroyed except for the High Bridge. Ooh, I should draw that in. Located approximately there. Very approximate. Don't at me. Now he has to get up to his uncle's place in Croy, which is supposed to be Yonkers which would be up the Hudson over here. Just use your imaginations. It does go out of its way to mention that a couple years later he has to build a canoe in order to, you know, continue on with the story. But regardless, let's just assume he had a boat. Fine. Now he doesn't want to go by way of the Hudson here because the book points out that the doomsmen have like Viking yachts lining all along here, and if you're not careful, they'll see you and capture you, and that's not good for anyone. But the problem with the East River is that it is a tidal estuary, and, you know, it's a little tricky to navigate, especially once you get past Roosevelt Island here, and you start getting over into Randall's Island here, and then the danger is, if you don't time it right, you might get swept right out the Hell's Gate into Long Island Sound, bunch of little, you know, islands here that I didn't have time to draw on the map, you can navigate through the Harlem River here, through the Spite and Dival. Uh, funny story, there's actually a little tip of Manhattan here 
that was cut off from Manhattan and added to the Bronx, but it's still technically a part of Manhattan, Marble Hill, look it up. And then entering the Hudson through there, heading up towards Croy, knee, Yonkers. That seems like a lot of effort. Like a lot of effort for a kid who's not described as someone like really having access to things like boats. He has to have access to a boat though, because as I said, all the bridges and tunnels have been destroyed except for the high bridge. So if he's here, you can't just walk into Yonkers. I mean, sure, you could, you could walk up Brooklyn here, but then you're going to have to get your butt around the Gowanus. Because I'm pretty sure even in 1906, the Gowanus was not a place you'd want to try to ford. And then you've got a mosey on all the way up through Queens, but then your problem is, uh, how are you going to cross the Hell's Gate? It's got currents and stuff. So then what, you gonna island hop to Randall's Island? I mean, that's a bit of a distance. And then what, you gonna go and try and get the Bronx from there? I mean, this, th it's just, look, what you have to understand is that the five boroughs outside of the Bronx is just a series of interconnected islands, all right? And if you lose the tunnels or the bridges, I hope you have a boat, because otherwise you're stuck. You're just gonna live there forever now. Okay, like look, there was a blackout last week and I couldn't get back to Queens. Sure, I could have crossed the Queensboro Bridge, also known as the 59th Street Bridge, also known as the Ed Koch, but I don't know why we renamed it that. It's the Queensboro Bridge, people. Like, let's, let's not, let's not. But that would require a lot of effort and it was hot and so I waited until the lights went back on and then I could catch a bus. Uh, but the point is, I was trapped in Manhattan and I couldn't get home to Queens. So that's what one has to keep in mind when you're futzing around with New York geography. You know, if you're going to build a post-apocalyptic world where the Society for Creative Anarchism took over, don't destroy all your bridges and tunnels, then you have to introduce fairies. Anyway, getting back to it. Here's my problem. He describes him overlooking a sort of Palisades-like area, that he's from the Valley of the Swift Water, of the Green Woods, uh, yada, yada, yada. Say his family's stock hold is over here, right? From here, you have sight of the Palisades, which are a truly majestic piece of geography. Uh, high, high stone walls on the Jersey side that the glacier just shoved right out of the Hudson. It's, it's really marvelous stuff. So you'd have view of that. You technically could still have view of, you know, Manhattan, but then you also have access to the Bronx River, which is actually the largest freshwater river in the five boroughs and is actually, you know, swift, as in swift water. Look, you can describe the Gowanus as a lot of things, but swift? I'm not so sure if I'd call it swift. I mean, sure, there's the Greenwood Cemetery, but I mean, the Bronx is so green up there, especially if you're around the Botanic Garden. You really could have put it in the Bronx. That's where his family could have been. And then it fits the description of only being about like seven, 10 miles from Yonkers. Then you just mosey on up, walk that way. You don't have to worry about any bridges or tunnels or waters or boats or canoes. It just makes sense. This doesn't make sense. Now I know what you're thinking. Nella, you're overthinking this. I mean, it's just a piece of fiction. It's, it's, a, it's a silly post-apocalyptic novel written by somebody who edited golf magazines for Harper Brothers. Why are you going on and on about New York geography? It's not important. And you know what, you're, prob you're probably right. I mean, <sighs> look, it's only that I live here and I do take this very seriously, but, you know, maybe I should just take a step back from the maps, from the geography, from the, the overwhelming need to have people understand how my city works. You know, just go outside, breathe some of that beautiful New York City summer air, just move on with my life in general. I mean, in the end of the day, it's, it's just a map.
Okay, but then the other thing is, at one point in the book, the bad guys go on a cattle raid, and I have questions about how they get the cattle back to Manhattan. Hear me out. So the Doomsmen are stationed here, in the city of Doom, also known as Manhattan. Now, our heroes Biffle, Gulick, which sounds like something you'd put in an egg cream. For those of you playing the home game, uh, if you make a proper New York egg cream, you're supposed to use a chocolate syrup called You Bet. God, now I really want an egg cream. It's so hot in here. Oh, there's nothing more refreshing than an egg cream, I, I swear to you. I know it sounds weird. There are no eggs in it. It's just like cream and seltzer and chocolate syrup. And then you, you just... Look, I don't know what to tell you. It's just really good, okay? Try it one time. Yeah, so they're they're in they're in Doom. Right. So they're in Doom and they have to go steal some cattle, like you do. Now they say they have to go south. Here's the thing. The only thing south of Manhattan is water, like the Atlantic, and then there's Staten Island. And then there's Jersey, which would be extending down this way. So you have to cross the Hudson or any body of water to go anywhere south, land-wise, where there would be cattle. Pretty sure no one's keeping cattle in the middle of the upper and lower bays here. Just, just saying. I mean, maybe they're sea cattle. I don't know. It's the apocalypse. Who knows what crazy things people have come up with. If the high bridge is the only way to get in and out of Manhattan outside of the boats, that's fine. So they'll just hop in their Viking boats, right? And they'll they'll just go down the Hudson. Maybe they'll go, so there's this little kill, which is a Dutch word for like river. Uh, there's this little kill, you can go around Staten Island here instead of going out through the narrows. But, so say they go this way, and they, they decide to raid Southern Jersey, because at one point, the one of the main characters is like, yeah, I had to hide amidst the Southern Pines, which, Oh, so he went to the Pine Barrens. Great, so they go down, go down all the way down to the, to the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Great, like say hello to Atlantic City while you're down there for me. So they're all the way down there, right? And it all goes poorly, but they do manage to get some cattle or something. I don't know, that's not important. The important thing is they're obviously in Jersey. And I have questions about how they're going to get the cattle back in Manhattan. Here's why. They insist they have to bring the cattle in through the high bridge. That doesn't make any sense. Let's say your Viking boats can carry cattle. You just load all that cattle up into your Viking boats. Why would you come all the way back up the Hudson like this come round this bend here, unload them in the Bronx, and then have to bring them all the way down to like here where your fortress is. And you know, cattle need things like water and food, and then they get grumpy, when why not, wild idea, if you, if, and this is just supposing, your ships can handle this, you load the cattle up and you just drop them off right here. I mean, there's still piers. I mean, this is where you're, you're, you're loading up your bad guys when you go raiding. I mean, so why not just use the docks here? But no, 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 no. They, they, uh, they get down here, and then their plan is to march the cattle up through Jersey. And then what? How, how, how are they gonna get the cattle from Jersey to the Bronx for the high bridge. Von Tassel. Riddle me this. You've gone out of your way to say all the tunnels, because there would have been tunnels here, there were railroad tunnels. You go out of your way of saying that all those tunnels have been destroyed. But the high bridge is the only bridge with a tunnel left remaining to bring anyone in and out of Manhattan. So how did I get the cattle in? How do they get the cattles in Van Tassel? There's a river there. It's called the Hudson. It's kind of a big deal. And not, it's not like you can just like go upwards up there because in what, like, in what world does that make sense? 
Anyway, so this author had absolutely no idea what he was doing geography-wise. Oh, sure, like, in Manhattan itself, there's some cool bits where it's like, ooh, Park Row, ooh, it's the, it's the Flatiron. Ooh, look at all these buildings that have been abandoned by humanity over 90 years and are tilting over. Oh, wow, my landmarks. And then, as soon as he gets out of Manhattan, though, it all goes tits up. Van Tassel was obviously someone who never ventured out into the outer boroughs, and it shows. Look, to you playing the home game, if you're gonna write a post-apocalyptic book wherein everything regresses back to some sort of Anglo-Saxon feudalism, think about your geography. Like, keep, keep your bodies of water in mind, and how that affects transport. You'll be doing me a huge favor if you did that. Because then I might actually be able to read a book and not constantly get distracted trying to figure out exactly where on a map you, the author, are trying to place the story. Just, just keep me in mind next time, okay? Thanks. I appreciate that. A shout out to my earlenders, Avi Finkel, Chandra, Johan Gustafsson, Mario B, William Christopher, and Xantha Pink. Thank you again for your long-term support. I couldn't do it without you. And a special shout out to my very first postcard I received in my brand new P.O. box. Hang on, I got it right here. Not only was it one postcard, it was a postcard with a bunch of different postcards. And they're all amazing. Look at these postcards. Look at them. Look. They're such cool postcards. Look at that. Dear Nella, I wasn't sure which to send you, so I've sent five postcards. I feel like you and I have the same life problems. I hope you like at least one. Oh, I do. I think of them, I'm probably gonna say, I'm probably gonna say this one's my favorite because there's all these heads in the background on pikes and I wanna know what happened. And also she has like three heads. So, I have questions. I really enjoy your videos and podcasts. Thank you. If you're ever in Dublin, please give me a shout. I'll recommend which pubs to avoid. That would be extraordinarily useful. Unfortunately, I can't really read your signature, so I can't say your name out loud. So, but thank you so much for sending me those postcards. And if you would like to send me postcards, uh, the details of my P.O. box are in the uh, description below. Check it out. Send me a postcard. I love postcards. Postcards for days. Until next time.